We gotta make sure we get this right or your plants are gonna die like super fast. What's up and welcome back to The Strain Show and the sixth video in the Beginner's Grow Guide playlist where we are learning everything you need to know to grow from seed to harvest. Our seeds are now planted and we are gonna need to feed them very soon. So in this video, we're gonna cover some very important things about nutrients and feeding that can save you a lot of trouble later and it's all gonna be really easy. We're gonna cover different water sources and the best water to use, the importance of PPM, the role of proper pH balance, and I'll show you the exact exact order you need to mix everything in. The secret recipe. Well, it's not really secret, but it's very important. So let's start with the basics. You might think that the water you use doesn't matter, but the type of water you use can affect how you mix nutrients and the quality of your final harvest. The water that most of us have cheap and easy access to is just regular old tap water. And tap water can work fine, but there are some things you should remember when you're using water straight from the sink. First, we have chlorine, which is commonly added to the municipal water supply as a disinfectant. Chlorine can make water safe to drink, but it can also kill off beneficial microbes in your soil that are great for your plant. Some people will leave their water out in an open container for a day or two before using it in hopes that all of the chlorine will just evaporate, but lots of different water supplies are now also adding chloramine as a disinfectant. Chloramine can also kill your microbes, but unlike regular chlorine, chloramine doesn't just dissipate through evaporation, and it can stay in water for much longer periods of time. So if your tap water contains chloramine, just letting the water sit out to evaporate probably won't be enough to remove it. But if you aren't growing organic, or you're not using soil that is pre-amended with microbes, or you're not adding some type of beneficial microorganisms to your nutrients, which a lot of beginners aren't, killing off your microbes might not really be that big of a concern. But that isn't all that is in your tap water. If I look at the readout for what is in the tap water here in Denver, we have trace elements of fun things like fluoride, nickel, lead, and sometimes even runoff from herbicide. And some cities can be much worse. And depending on what's actually in your tap water, this could be of concern because cannabis plants are what are known as hyperaccumulators or bioremediators, which is just a plant that can break down or remove like pollutants and toxins from the soil or from the air. Cannabis absorbs things like these heavy metals from the soil really well and it holds them in the plant. So if you add water that has heavy metals or something sketchy in it, it could end up in your final product. And a lot of this stuff that can be in the water you really don't want to be smoking. Another popular option for growers is reverse osmosis water. Reverse osmosis filtration is a process that uses a special membrane to remove impurities from the water. Water is forced through the membrane at high pressure, which traps contaminants and allows only pure water molecules to pass through. The process can remove a variety of impurities from tap water, including dissolved salts, minerals, metals, chemicals, and microorganisms. The RO filter will remove lead, chlorine, arsenic, arsenic, fluoride, nitrates, and bacteria. And the result is clean, safe, and great tasting drinking water. It's also really clean water that you can use that makes sure nothing weird from your tap water gets absorbed by your plants and contaminates your medicine. I have a video all about how this can happen and cause plants to fail testing because they had contaminated water or soil that I will link up there and in the description, but I don't want that in any of my plants and that's why I use an RO filter. I have this one from NU Aqua that I will be doing a video about very soon. And you don't have to use this your first time growing, you can definitely get by without it, but it just makes me feel better knowing that my water is clean to start with, and it actually makes feeding my plants easier in some ways too by helping me with our next topic, which is PPM. So there are two ways to check how much nutrients you are feeding your plant. You can test the EC, or electrical conductivity, or you can test the PPM, which is parts per million. And this can start to seem overwhelming to a beginner really fast, so we're going to keep it super simple and just focus on PPM. I'm going to tell you all you need to know really quickly and simply. PPM just shows how much stuff is in your water. And tap water can have anywhere from 100 to 500 PPM of additives or contaminants, or maybe even more. But filtered water, like RO water, has basically nothing in it but pure water, and it is usually under 10 PPM. 
PPM is important because it helps you measure the amount of nutrients and minerals you're adding to the water when you're feeding your plant so you aren't overfeeding or underfeeding. The roots can only absorb a certain amount of nutrients and minerals from the water at any given time, and if the PPM levels are too high, it can overwhelm the roots and prevent them from absorbing water and nutrients properly, which could lead to nutrient lockout, where some nutrients can't be absorbed efficiently, or nutrient burn, where some nutrients are being absorbed too much. In the very next video in this playlist, we will get into what PPM range is good for each stage of growth because it does change as your plants get bigger, but there will always be some range that we don't want to go over. So if you're using tap water and it is already starting out at 300 PPM and you don't want your nutrient mix to go over like 800 PPM, you will only be able to add about 500 PPM of nutrients. So having super clean RO water can be really helpful if your tap water has a high PPM. And in a lot of cases, people can get away without ever checking their PPM at all, because sometimes things just work out like that. But checking your PPM is very easy to do with the digital TDS meter, which measures the total dissolved solids in your water and shows you in PPM. This one tool can help you avoid making a lot of feeding mistakes, and I highly recommend you pick one up so you can check your water and your nutrient mixes. This one has a good price and it works great, so I'll link it in the description. And before we get into the specific way we have to mix our nutrients, we need to cover something else very important that can help you get healthier plants and bigger yields, and that is pH. pH is a measure of the acidity or alkalinity of a solution, including the water you give your plant. The pH level of the water is important for growers because it affects the ability of the plants to absorb nutrients and minerals from the soil. Your plants can only get the nutrients they need if the pH is in the right range. If the pH level is too high or too low, the plants are unable to absorb certain nutrients even if they are present in the soil. This can cause nutrient deficiencies and all kinds of other health problems like stunted growth, yellow leaves, and small yields. This chart shows nutrient availability to cannabis plants plants at different pH levels. And you will see that in some pH ranges, the plant can get a lot of the nutrients, but if you go to another pH range, it can barely absorb any at all. In general, it's best to feed your plants with a mix that has a pH level between 5.5 to 7.0. If you're growing in cocoa, it's best to stay between 5.6 and 6.6, .6, but aim for 5.8. If you are using soil, you can go a little higher, like 6.0 to 6.5. And you will measure your pH with another electric pen like this. It looks just like the TDS pen that shows us our PPM, but this one measures pH instead. And we will adjust our pH by adding just a few drops of our pH up or pH down solution that we covered in the last video. But don't adjust your pH yet because there's actually a very specific order that you have to do everything in when you're mixing all of your nutrients. We covered the types of nutrients we need in video number three in this playlist, but we haven't covered the very specific order in which we need to add everything into the water. We can't just add all of our nutrients into the water in any order we want. We need to mix everything in the correct order to make sure none of of our elements bind together, making them harder for the plant to absorb. Besides our base nutrients, we might be mixing in a CalMag supplement, maybe some silica, you might add bloom boosters and flower, beneficial microbes, and your pH up and pH down. And we're gonna go week by week on exactly what to feed your plants at each stage of growth in the next videos in this playlist. But every single time we mix our nutrients throughout the entire life of our plants, we will always need to mix our nutrients in this specific order I'm about to show you. And this involves a lot of mixing, which is something that is easy to do just by stirring if you're only going to mix a few gallons of water at a time. But if you're growing multiple plants in good sized pots, you're going to be mixing a pretty big amount of water. Like I have four plants in five gallon pots and to feed them I need to mix about seven gallons of water, which can be sort of a pain to stir. So I just use a small water pump. This can make your life a lot easier. I just toss this into my reservoir and plug it in to keep the water mixing while I add everything so I never have to stir it by hand. So keep that in mind if you want to make this a little easier for larger amounts of water. So let's get into the steps. Start with water that is between 68 to 73 degrees and add your nutrients in this order. First add your silica, then your CalMag, then all of your base nutrients, then any boosters or additives, then adjust your pH, and then add any beneficial micro. 
microbes. We will check our feeding chart from the nutrient brand we're using to see our recommended doses of everything. Get something to measure it with and then just go down the list. You can use plastic pipettes that are cheap or little measuring cups and look for something that measures liquids in milliliters. Your chart will show you milliliters, teaspoons, or tablespoons. If it's showing you teaspoons, that is the same as five milliliters and a tablespoon is 15 milliliters. If you're using silica, add it first and mix well. Then add your CalMag and mix it well too. Then add your base nutrients one at a time, mixing good between each one. After your base newts are mixed, you will add any boosters or additives you may be using. And again, mix everything up really good between everything you put in. And use clean pipettes or just clean out your measuring cup between everything so you don't accidentally mix anything together before it gets in the water. Everything needs to be added to the water one at a time, then mixed really good before adding the next thing. After all of this is mixed together really good, you can use your pH pen to check what your pH is. This will determine if you need to use your pH up or pH down solution. And this pH adjustment stuff can do a lot with only a few drops. So add it into your mix very slowly. Just add a very small amount, like a few drops, and then mix it really well and give the mix like five minutes to sort of settle out and reach the new pH level. And then test the pH again until you get it right. Lots of growers will even dilute the pH solution in plain water, then add a little of that water instead of adding the pH solution directly to the reservoir. So instead of taking the pH solution straight from the bottle and then putting one drop into the nutrient mix, you could just take your pH solution and then put one drop of that into some separate water. Then you would take one drop of this water that has the diluted pH mix and then add this water to your mix one drop at a time. And that can make things take a little longer, but it can save you from adding too much. But after you get your pH into that ideal range, then you can add any microbial inoculants you might be using in your mix. And then you're ready to feed your plants. So now we need to know how much and how often to feed our new little plants for these first few weeks of growth. And to learn all about that, plus everything else you need to know for these first two weeks of growth, click on this video. We're going to cover weeks one and two of vegetative growth for your new little plants, and we're going to go over some very important beginner mistakes that you need to avoid. I'll see you there. Peace.